Welcome to Module 5, Lesson 37, Multiply Fractions Using the Distributive Property. Now, the distributive property is an excellent technique for you to use when you multiply many things, not just fractions. So, let's go ahead and check it out. Oftentimes, you're presented with some kind of a situation where you have a number and you want to multiply it by something larger but you are maybe walking along somewhere, you don't have a calculator, you don't have pencil and paper, and you need to get this done in your head. This is why I said adults use this a lot. A lot of times we have to do simple, quick multiplication calculations. Let's say I was making $156 every day, and I was gonna do some kind of a job for three days, and I wanted to know what 156 was three times. Well, to distribute the work, which distributive property, of course, would be using the word distribute, you would go ahead and find out what three hundreds are, and then three tens, and then finally three ones. So instead of doing all the work at once, you break it into three. So I would go three one hundreds, of course, is just three hundred. And then the middle one here, three fives. Now that's not really five, that's a fifty. It's in the tens, right? So 350s is 150. And then the 6 is in the 1s, so 3 6s makes 18. And so I would quickly have a total of 468. Yes, you could do the algorithm, 156 times 3, but I'll tell you, memorizing the algorithm in your head can get often confusing when you start getting into larger numbers. But this distributing, this sharing method, is very, very great. Now, oftentimes, it's written in an equation something like this. Whatever the first number is, you multiply it times another number and another number. Now, I know this is just the algebraic form. It looks kind of weird with letters. But I'm just letting you know. Whatever your uh, multiple groups is, that would be out here, and you want to multiply it times both of these. So, let's see how it looks with fractions. On number one, let me get my colors here changed. On number one, it wants you to draw two tape diagrams, two, to represent three units or sets of five and a twelfth. A lot of students get confused on number one, but I think this is a really good way for you to look at what distributing is. So we want two tape diagrams. So I'm going to do two. I'm going to try to draw them nearly the same size because they're both going to have the same total. And they want three units of five and a twelfth. Well, you know, one way I would do that is think of five and a twelfth, five and a twelfth, and 5 and a 12th, right? Three sets of 5 and a 12th. But you could also distribute this work and break it apart. I could think of three fives. 5, 5, and 5. Three sets of fives. And also three sets of 12s. Twelfths, right? So a 12th, a 12th, and a 12th. Now, it doesn't ask you to solve. They just want you to show it two different ways. Isn't this piece of tape going to be the same amount as this piece of tape? On this one, all I did was put the 5 and a 12th together three times. On this one, I have my 3 5 separated from my 3 1 12 Both would work, right? Now, the one on the right is distributive. Down below, it says write a multiplication expression to match each one. Oh, okay, well, the first one was three sets of five and a twelfth, right? Three times one twelfth could look like this, three, five, and one twelfth. Now, on the other side, right here, I distributed. I actually did three sets of five, and then it's good to put those in parentheses. They are by themselves. I did three sets of five and plus sign. I also did three sets of twelfths. I separated them. So here I separated them with a plus sign and put this group apart from this group. 
but we do them both, and then we put them together. Okay, let's see how that looks when you are asked to multiply fractions. The first one's been done for you. Let me uh, kind of adjust this a little bit here. First one's been done for you a little bit, so I'm going to move on from that and go on to the second one, where they ask you to multiply five sets of four and a six. Now, I would love to have just done five times one six, right? That was the last lesson. Easy. But now there's this four here. So instead of multiplying it all at once, I'm going to focus on doing five times four and five times one six separately. So, five times four is going to be separate from five sets of six. Now underneath I'm going to change each one. Five times four makes twenty and five times one-sixth is five-sixths. Remember how I got that. You just multiply five times one and put that as a numerator and the bottom unit sixths stay the same. Now all you have to do is put these two numbers together and what do you end up getting? Twenty and five-sixths. Done. Let's try the next one. Six sets of two and six sets of three oops, fifths. Sorry about that three. So now I'm going to have 12 and I'm also going to have 18 fifths, which turns into three and three fifths. So this one changed to three and three fifths. I also have a 12, put them together, and you'll get your total of 15 and three fifths. Okay, let me do one more. On D, it's saying that there are two sets of sevens, but there's also two sets of three tenths. So two sets of seven is 14, and two sets of three tenths is six tenths, which could be reduced to five, um, three fifths, so you don't have to. So you get a final total answer of 14 and six tenths. Okay? And we also work this out with word problems. So, for example, the last question, I believe, number four, says that Kelly's new puppy weighed four and seven tenths pounds when she brought him home. Now, he weighs six times as much. He has gained a lot, right? So how much does he weigh now? So he was four and seven tenths, but now he's six times that, six sets of that. So let's use distributive property. Let's multiply the six times the four, and let's multiply the six times the seven tenths. We're sharing the work. We're distributing it. Six times four is 24, and six times seven tenths is 42 tenths, which is very improper. So we'll divide 42 divided by 10 and get four and two tenths left over, which could be one fifth, right? So my now, now my total is these two to find the total weight of this dog, which is 28 pounds and two tenths. So 28 and two tenths pounds. All right. Distributive property is a great method to learn how to do some quick multiplication. If you need help with it, please see me, and I'd be glad to. Thanks.